Welcome to the series where I test out money making methods from the OSRS wiki. Feel free to leave suggestions on which money maker you'd like to see next. And also, if you didn't already know, I have a nice playlist that I've created that has all of the previous money makers that I've already tried. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. With that being said, let's get into the video. So for today's video, I thought we'd go ahead and do another fishing video since you guys really seem to enjoy those. And we will be catching sharks in the fishing guild since that is the best place to do it. We get a nice invisible boost of plus 7 there. And since we are in the guild, the dragon harpoon spec will help out even though we are already 99 fishing. Now even though a high fishing level is required to do this money maker, at least we don't have to spend any money on supplies and we don't really have to worry about it being very click intensive. Fishing is one of the most AFK things in RuneScape so this should be a good time. Now you can actually do this money maker without a harpoon if you go the barbarian fishing route and for that you'll need 96 fishing and 76 strength so if you feel like catching sharks with your hands then go ahead and do that. But for me, like I said, I'll be using the Dragon Harpoon spec just to give us those extra fishing levels. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can bring the Crystal Harpoon, although that does cost Crystal Shards to operate. Now, like I said earlier, we will be doing this moneymaker in the Fishing Guild. A couple ways you can get there is, well, I guess there's really only one good way, which is using the Skills Necklace to go directly to the Fishing Guild. Me personally, I have the Max Cape, so I'll just use that since it does teleport me inside of the fishing guild, which is a little bit closer than using the skills necklace, but again, the skills necklace will work just fine. And here we are, here are the spots. As you see, there are locations that are marked for sharks, and there are locations that are marked for the lobster areas. So we'll be fishing on this platform to the north, and then whenever we get a full inventory, we can use this bank deposit box over here, located in the bank, to quickly deposit all of the raw shark that we've caught. Now as for the gear setup, it's very simple, I'm just going to be bringing my angler's outfit. It's not necessary, you don't actually need this, but it gives you a bit of fishing XP, so why not? And like I said earlier, I am using the dragon harpoon, and since we are in the fishing guild, the spec will actually help us out in raising our fishing level that much higher. Normally the spec doesn't work for me, because I'm usually fishing outside of the guild, like at sacred eels, but since we're actually in the fishing guild, we can take advantage of that boost today. Now of course you can also bring the crystal harpoon which I said will speed it up. You will end up catching more sharks but it does consume crystal shards so if you do bring that I recommend bringing the elven signet ring as well or you could even bring an infernal dragon harpoon that will cook your shark. Well it has the chance to cook your shark so if you want some extra cooking xp you might want to go ahead and bring that one. And for the ammo slot, I am bringing the Rada's Blessing 4 because it gives me a chance at catching two fish instead of one. Although I don't get any extra XP for the second fish. And that is pretty much it. That's all you need to know for doing this moneymaker. Now you can just relax and AFK fish. Like I said before, fishing is one of the most chill things you can do in RuneScape, so it's always a good time. Even if you don't have the pet after a large amount of fishing XP, but that's fine. I'll get it one of these days. Who knows, maybe I'll even get it in this one hour. Now, I did mention earlier that you could actually fish without a harpoon as long as you have the right strength level and fishing level. You can do barehanded fishing, which is just as fast as fishing normally with a regular harpoon, but you also get some minimal strength XP. It's nothing too crazy, but I mean, if you're looking to be super efficient, then you might want to consider doing that. Although, of course, you do lose out on the spec from the dragon harpoon which gives you that extra three levels of fishing. So I'll leave it up to you, whichever one you decide to do. I mean if you go the barehanded route, you definitely look a lot cooler. So if you're trying to impress that runescape gf that's right next to you, I mean barehanded might be the best way to go. Now in terms of getting the fishing pet, here at sharks you have a 1 in 82,243 chance of getting it. Which is I guess, I mean, it's better than Sacred Eels, so if I really want the pet, I might come over here. But I just, I like Sacred Eels more because it's, I feel like it's more AFK since you don't have to bank. And you also get a lot more money with the Zolra skills that you get from them. Also, I feel like the spots don't move that far away from each other. Um, it didn't happen during this one hour, but it's definitely happened before where there's actually no shark areas on the northern platform. And I'll have to go to the southern platform until a shark spot pops up on the north one. 
Luckily though, that didn't happen during this one hour, so it's all good. Now besides the pet, you can actually get another rare drop here at Sharks, and that is the Big Shark. It is a 1 in 5,000 chance of getting it, and once you get it, it's just sort of an achievement thing. You don't really get anything crazy for doing it. You can stuff it and then mount it in your player-owned house, and it's just kind of a flex. There's also variations of the Big Fish for the Swordfish and for the Bass. The Swordfish is a 1 in 2,500 drop, and the Bass is a 1 in 1,000 drop rate. And while it seems like these are a lot easier to obtain than the shark, it's not necessarily true because whenever you're fishing for swordfish, not only do you get swordfish, but you also get tuna. And then whenever you fish for bass, not only do you get bass, but you get a whole lot of other useless junk along with some random fish. So they all pretty much balance out. I'd say bass is the worst one because you have to constantly be dropping all of the useless items or just banking more frequently. Whereas with shark, it's a bigger drop rate, but at least you're not picking up random pieces of junk, and you can AFK for longer periods of time. Now fortunately, I already have all of the big fish. I went for them a while back, and here are some pictures showing all of the catches and what they look like. Now I've got to say, fishing sharks will always have sort of a special place in my heart because back in the day when I was a little young RuneScape player, and I was fishing at Karamja, fishing for lobsters. I dreamed of the day that I'd finally fish sharks, and honestly that didn't happen until a few years ago whenever I got the fishing level for it. As a kid, I never made it that far in RuneScape, so I never got to fish the sharks. So now that I'm actually doing that, it's kind of sweet. It's too bad that they're not worth more money like they were back in the day. I feel like back then, uh, or at least for me, thinking about fishing sharks and cutting magic trees were like big money makers in my eyes, but maybe that's because I was mostly free to play and I didn't know too much about PVMing and members worlds. I mean, even today looking at the wiki, apparently cooking sharks can net you more money than actually fishing them, so you might be better off buying the sharks in the GE and just cooking them for profit. Unless of course you do have a very high fishing level and you're using the dragon harpoon because then you might be able to catch more fish than what the wiki is suggesting as we'll see in a bit. And here we are, finished with our one hour of fishing sharks. Very chill. We managed to catch 205 thanks to the Rada's Blessing. We got a few extra ones, and it's valued at around 174,250 GP. So, not a crazy amount of money, but it is a very AFK moneymaker, so it's all right. Now, unfortunately, I bought one of the sharks to see what the prices were like, and it Instabot for 839, so that's what I ended up throwing my sharks in there for. And it didn't take that much longer to sell all of them, so you might be able to get a little bit more money if you leave them in there overnight and put them for a little bit higher than what the market shows. So here we are with almost 172k after fishing for one hour. And there's a little shout out to some of the people that were chilling at the GE on the 2200 Worlds. Some people actually recognized me there, which is pretty cool. It's always nice to talk to you guys whenever I find you out in the world of RuneScape. But now we can finally calculate how much money we made from the one hour of fishing along with the XP we got from the one hour of fishing. So the total amount of money that we ended up making was 171,995 GP along with 22.1k fishing XP after this one hour. So because of our high fishing level and our Rada's Blessing, and maybe even the Dragon Harpoon, we did manage to get a lot more shark than what the wiki was suggesting. And again, you could possibly even get more sharks if you bring the Crystal Harpoon. So if you think it's worth it, go ahead and bring it, or maybe even bring the Infernal Harpoon for that sweet, sweet cooking XP. So again, it wasn't anything too crazy, but it's a very chill moneymaker that requires very little effort. So you can definitely be playing another account on the side which is basically what I've been doing for the past couple days. That is until my membership will run out on the pure account. I've just been sitting in NMZ training that ranged. And recently I've actually been messing around in the wilderness along with, you know, PKing. I've been training up my strength with the Vigorous Chain Mace and training on the Elder Chaos Druids, which has actually turned out to be a pretty great method of training strength. Now of course, it's in the wilderness and it's a little bit dangerous, but that's alright. I feel like the more time you spend in the wilderness, 
the more comfortable you get and the less you'll panic when you get attacked by a PK or so. It's always fun to do activities there. In fact, I'd say that some of the fun is actually in escaping PKers, like I did in my Callista video. If you haven't seen that, go ahead and check it out. It is a 10 hour long video instead of the usual one hour, so lots of loot in that one. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly a subscription. And as always, I will catch you guys in the next episode.